What's going on everybody? I want to tell you a story about how I came across this knife. <clears throat> Some knives have stories behind them and the way I found this one is kind of special to me. So my wife and I were on our honeymoon in South Dakota. We stayed in Deadwood for a couple days and some plans and some things got shuffled around. We didn't know what we were going to do. We had a free day. We saw the Badlands. Unbelievable. Go see it. Go see it. Uh, we saw that Devil's Tower wasn't too far away from where we were. Okay, because we were already, we did Mount Rushmore, go see it. Crazy Horse, go see it. You know, I recommend all these things because you'll never forget it and I don't think you'll ever regret it. Then we saw Devil's Tower and she passed it up as a kid because her grandpa didn't want to stop. So we had to do it. So we threw the dog in the truck, took off from Crazy Horse to Devil's Tower. And uh, it is something like you will never see again in your life, ever. There is nothing like it in the surrounding area, in the surrounding states, that region of the country. There is just nothing like Devil's Tower. It is otherworldly. And that's why they made movies. I think a movie, uh, Encounters of the Third Kind or something like that, because it looks like something from an alien flick. But it's like 800 feet in the sky. The top of Devil's Tower has grass and snakes and mice and all this, its own ecosystem on top of Devil's Tower. It is amazing. So we hiked around that until dark, getting to the point here. And we were thirsty and we stopped by a shop. I think it was called Devil's Tower View. There's also a trade post out there. But we stopped by, the guy said, where are you guys from? We said, oh, we're from Hillsborough, Missouri. And he said, I'm from Festus. And for local viewers uh, my of my YouTube channel, that is 12 miles from my house. So I go all the way to Devil's Tower, Wyoming, meet a guy from 12 miles from my house. Pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. He met a woman from Alaska, lived up there in Montana, and then now has property in a gift shop in Wyoming. Go figure. As soon as I walk in, I see antler, antler handled knives. And I said, stop. This is what I'm talking about. Because the whole honeymoon, I was looking for something that would last me the rest of my life, something that would be sentimental. I would remember the moment, remember that knife, and what it all meant to me. You know, if you get a t-shirt, it's going to break down and rip holes. I'm not a real big jewelry guy or anything like that, so that's not going to work. And I'm looking at these knives. Some of the antlers were so big on these knives. They weren't even ergonomic. They weren't comfortable, but they were cool, and it looked like a mountain man would just you know, have a sheath on his hip and skin and elk with it. I mean, it was just, they were cool. They were expensive. And then I saw this small knife and I said, let me see this one. So he went ahead and took it out. And this caught my eye. This is something that looks extremely practical. Something it looks like I can use literally the rest of my life. Something I will actually get to use. This will not be on a shelf. This will not be in a safe or in a case. Okay. This is probably going to go with my deer hunting, elk hunting, all that stuff. Okay. So I picked it up and I look at it. I see D2 steel. I'm like, okay, well, that's good. I think currently at the time I was carrying a pocket knife with D2 steel, uh, which is a good machine tool steel. And uh, it's very sharp. I've made it even a little bit sharper with my Spyderco Sharp Maker. I noticed uh, a thick blade, right, all the way down from the tip all the way to the handle. So it's a full tang. There's no break from the tip to the end of the handle. I saw the handle itself, which is antler, which is cool. And I saw that it was silver stag and I said that's an awesome knife you know I really like it I even like the sheath I like the way it retains it and everything it's really cool so I put it I gave it back to him I said but I really don't need to spend any money we're staying in Deadwood we're going pheasant hunting in South Dakota on our honeymoon and I really don't need to spend the money so thanks a lot for showing me then believe it or not they had mounted badgers there, and I almost bought a mounted badger for like $180, and it had its teeth shown. I know that's like redneck, but I love wolverines, and the badger is the next size smaller in the weasel family. Very, very uh, 
notorious animal, very dangerous animal, actually, for how small it is. Very people are there's a lot of fear that goes around wolverines and badgers. You don't mess with them, even though they're little. So anyway, long story short, I did not buy the badger. We got in the truck in the parking lot, and I looked at my wife and I said, I'm gonna go buy that knife. She said, Go, go buy it. You know, I don't care. So she sat in the truck and I went and I said, I'm back. I want to get that skinny knife. So anyway, I think I picked this thing up for about $140 and you might be able to find it cheaper. And if you do, awesome. But if you can find it cheaper in the middle of a remote location like Devil's Tower, Wyoming, and you meet a guy from almost your hometown and you're on your honeymoon, good luck. So I went ahead and bought it, right? This is my souvenir. I will remember this knife forever as my honeymoon knife. And, um, and I will carry it with me and take it hunting for the rest of my life. I'll have it at least in a knife bag when I'm cleaning deer and stuff like that. So, um, again, let's take a look at it. Okay. So a lot of people, when they see a knife like this, they aren't necessarily attracted to it. And the reason being is the blade shape. Okay. This is a skinning knife. Let me explain. Here's a knife I found in the woods, which was a good day because I found a knife in the middle of Mark Twain National Forest hiking with my buddy Dan. Pretty cool. This is a Schrade Skinner. See the gut hook on it? The gut hook right here is so you can turn the knife upside down, stick it into the animal, pull up the stomach and the chest cavity without going deep into the intestines and the bladder and making a mess with the meat that we're saving. Okay, but look at the similarities in the blade shape right here. Okay, so, you know, there's not a lot of piercing ability here. Definitely not here. Let's look at a different style blade. So it's all about purpose. Here is, you know, the Buck 112. I've done a review on this. This is the drop point. Look how pointy that thing is. Now, to be honest with you, I've skinned more animals with this knife than any other knife that I own. With that being said, I've cut more holes in coyotes and raccoons and deer capes with this knife than any other knife I own, <laughs> okay? So there is a purpose in the structure of this blade, in the design of this blade. This is a skinning knife. You can skin animals with this, but it also has a lot of piercing ability as well, okay? You get the point. So. Let me put these away. Now, of course, everybody would like a knife like this. I just recently did a review on the Presidio 2 Benchmade. And, you know, this is an attractive knife. The color, the blade shape, right? Depending on your taste, this is tactical, this is practical. No, I'm just kidding, just kidding. But you get the point. So. With this knife here, um, it's, it's built for a very specific purpose. And I got on the website, and these are made in the United States. That's why they're going to cost a little bit more money. It's good material. The antler handles are from North American Sheds. So for those of you that don't know, elk and deer shed their antlers every year, and they grow back. They lose their antlers, they fall off their head, and they grow back. So people aren't out massacring deer and elk to make antler-handled knives, okay? These are from North American sheds that are going to grow back next year. So Silver Stag um, makes a pretty good product. I have not skinned an animal with this yet, but I will, uh, hopefully this fall. And I'm really, really impressed with it, actually, for what it is. And uh, I'm fine with paying that price because people in the United States are getting paid United States wages. You know, they're not getting uh, low, low wages that people do in other foreign countries. And you got to pay for that. And that employs people in North America. So I'm all about that. Okay, that's the point is I'm all about that. So it says they've been making knives for over 20 years. I think they're from the Northwest. And... It's all manufactured in the United States. They have over 85 designs of knives from $90 to $150. This is a general range, okay? Um, from one inch, which I don't know what 
kind of knife that is to over 21 inches, which is crazy. Um, so that might be a sword or something. I have no idea. A little dagger machete, but they have a really big variety. This is called the slab series and they're talking about the handle is the slab. Okay. So these are all put together and ground by hand. So technically, if you want to get technical, there is no other knife on earth that ex is exactly specced to this handle and this blade. I think that's pretty cool. There are some that are very, very similar, but not the same. All right. So here is another one. This is a full tang buck knife that I got. And uh, you could skin with it, but again, you'll see the point on that thing. That's going to go through a hide a lot easier than the skinner itself. So let's take a look at the sheath. Uh, it retains really well. I don't know how much or how practical this is. You know, I think you can tie it some different ways. You'll notice that it's not going to hang vertical when you put a belt through this, right? Because the belt's going to go perpendicular with the knife. So the knife will actually be horizontal or a little bit on an angle on your hip, which I like. I think it's pretty cool. Um, I am very confident in the retention of this sheath. I keep wanting to say holster. So when you put this thing through, you can really feel it grab the blade. Um, it's super thick right here as well. So I don't have a fear that this is going to cut through my hand. And to be honest, I don't think this sheath was made in the United States. I think it was made in Mexico. So maybe still North America. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, please, but I'm pretty sure this had a tag or something that said Mexico on it. Uh, not the end of the world, but the knife itself is awesome. It's got the brass pins on it. So again, the largest part that's going to be used when skinning is this part right here is going to be the main part. Okay. And this thing is razor sharp. I'm not going to cut paper and try to prove myself or anything like that, but it is razor sharp. It does have a little bit of markings on the blade and that's from being in the leather, but I'm not really concerned about that. I think functionality wise, it's not going to make a difference. Uh, a little sharpening choil there. But whenever you're skinning, this, you know, there's connective tissue between the hide and the muscle on the animal. And that's where you're going to be pulling back and skinning with the knife. So if it was pointy, it would go right through it and probably ruin the hide, especially if you're mounting it or something like that or selling pelts. But it's just a really, really nice little knife. And I'm really impressed. So anyway, to finish up, from what I can find, because there's nothing stamped on the blade, which I'm okay with, I kind of like that plain look, is it's called the Tyler Hunter, the TH 4.5. It's a slab series. I think it's $144 on the Stag Knives website. So it's a four and a half inch blade and an eight and a half inch knife with that D2 steel. So. I honestly recommend it. I think it's going to be perfect and practical for hunting. And that's mainly what I'm going to be using it for. This is not usually going to be an everyday carry. It's not a tactical knife. It's not a self-defense knife. Okay, this is a hunting knife for skinning. And I found it on my honeymoon. So that's the story behind my stag Tyler Hunter TH 4.5. As always, subscribe if you want to see more reviews like this. I really appreciate you guys watching. Have a good rest of the day.